can a dating show prove that people can fall in love based on emotional connections without caring about physical appearance? Will I have trouble picking you up? Raven is like the typical girl that I would go after in the real world. Like, that's the person I want to go talk to because they look good. Lips, but caring what your best attributes are. If, if I'm a propose, that's something I need to know. I guess we're done. Love is Blind bills itself as a social experiment where in the first stage, 30 singles have blind dates, trauma dump all over each other for 10 days, get engaged without seeing each other, and everyone who doesn't find a match gets eliminated. Which, harsh, but this is what you do in experiments. Remove everyone who won't support your conclusion. Hey, I'm Nicole. Welcome to me talking nonstop at you and you not being able to say a thing. We have a great time. The worthy couples have this awkward reveal moment where if the other person isn't what they had expected, they attempt Oscar-worthy performances so they don't get eviscerated by the viewing public. Until the internet screenshots their micro-expressions and flames them anyway. After a honeymoon, moving in together, and meeting family and friends, the couples decide on marriage at the altar. Since 2020, 8 out of 34 Love is Blind couples, or 16 out of 150 contestants, remain married. So. Not super promising for the experiment, but I think we all know love isn't blind and no one cares. That's not why we're here. We're here for the crazy. We're here for the mess. We want to psychoanalyze some unhinged, probably edited to unreality behavior. So keep in mind that who knows how much of this is even real. Don't be weird and write people hate comments. And let's introduce the cast of season six. We start off in the pods and meet lots of people, most of them getting more laughter than they deserve. If you had a warning label, what would it say? Uh, does not do laundry. <laughs> you don't know who to care about yet, so you have to learn a lot of names and faces, which is not ideal if you want to watch Love is Blind to rot. The first relevant guy is Trevor. He's part of a love square. Tell me five things that make you smile. A very sunny day. Butterflies, fresh cut lawn. Is he a dog? The good love movie. But the notebook, duh. Nah. Walk to remember. Yeah. Other than this, he seems nice enough, but you never know with the men on Love is Blind. Some of them are so secretly terrible in hindsight, you wonder if there was something in the water. Turns out there's nothing in the water on set because there isn't any water. More on this later. Trevor's top choice is Chelsea, who is super bubbly and is just thrilled every time she gets that sweet, sweet validation. Because I love you. Yeah. I love you. Holy shit. I'm about to throw up. I'm going to throw up. Literally about to throw up. I want to throw up. I want to puke. After an uncomfortable lull in a conversation with Jimmy, her other prospect, she asks, Do you ever get told you look like a celebrity? All the time on the plane, I get one person. And it's just because I have dark hair and blue eyes. I don't even know if it's MGK's wife or her, his girlfriend. Megan Fox. Which is wild, saying MGK's girlfriend and pretending not to know Megan Fox like she's not more of a household name. Chelsea got ridiculed online for comparing herself to Megan Fox, and honestly, people went overboard in trying to put her in her place. Apparently, Jimmy compared himself to Christian McCaffrey. I can kind of see her resemblance. I'm not lying, but she was definitely wrong for mentioning it. I wouldn't have intentionally put that in Jimmy's head, knowing that it was gonna set his expectations really high. Like, look at him light up. Can we get married? Buddy. Under promise and over deliver. Jimmy is just kind of there at this stage. I mostly remember him only in the context of his reactions to his dates, especially to Jessica. Jessica is a single mom who has a 10 year old daughter. What's going on? <gasps> my husband. <laughs> Wait, oh my God, I just said that out loud. I'm sorry, I did not mean to say that out loud. Oh my god. She, and to be fair, a lot of this cast, uses a lot of internet slang taken from AAVE. Not us wearing the same shirt. I'm just getting married. Not the painting! Not me having to put deceased for my dad. Slay. She delays telling Jimmy that she has a daughter, though on this accelerated timeline, she probably tells him at most a few days in. Jimmy says he's not bothered, but he's bothered. How come we didn't talk about that earlier? He's been getting some flack for this online and his response was highly imperfect, but I think it's fine for him to not want to date a single mother. I'm more wondering why Jessica would want to bring a 10 year old into this accelerated one month marriage timeline. I mean, at least bring the kid to the pods. I don't mean that. He is a little weird for bringing it into his conversation with Chelsea. 
Chelsea confides in him that she's divorced, and then this is how he reacts. To be okay. honest, I heard bigger news today that scared me a little bit more. Uh, yeah, I, I just have had a lot dumped on me today. Yeah. Next is AD. If I see a red flag, I'm like, oh, well, I'll just paint my nails red to match. She hits it off with Clay and Matthew. Clay immediately raises a few red flags. So are you like ready for like a long-term commitment? I believe I am. I think I'm ready for that next stage of like settling down. My worst fear is like, we do the reveal and it's like, oh, wow. Like we never really talked about physical. Love is blind, like I get it. I just have to be attracted to you. Naturally, I, I would say I kind of lean towards more like petite. My, my favorite attribute is like lips but and all that stuff, like caring what your best attributes are. If, if I'm a proposed, that's something I need to know. Regardless of the emotional condition. Regardless of the emotional. Matthew is someone who I can't believe is real. Having conversations about our emotions is probably not somewhere I, where I would excel. How is everything going today? Uh, I don't know. We'll, you know, we'll keep that close to the vest. He comes in with a list of questions like it's an interview, which is just so off-putting. Number and then you get a corresponding question. Number four, please. This one's been requested a couple of times. It would try to be something different. You know, I was just going to ask the questions. I wasn't really anticipating getting the same one back. He also says a few things that are odd to bring up of his own accord. I'm certainly not doing this to become a C-list celebrity. What I'm saying to you, I'm not saying to anybody else. Sounds like you're telling on yourself. AD is smitten. Turns out Matthew is telling on himself. He's told Amber the exact same things he's told AD. Oh, if I could propose to somebody without asking permission. And I'll just carry you out of here. He talked about like asking my dad oh, yeah. Yeah. if he can't do yeah, that. I can't do that. <laughs> One of my favorite parts of Love is Blind is the on the nose music, and this season delivers. Exactly what I came here for. I can't get enough of me song, Humpy. I see, I see the clouds on the horizon. Never see or talk to Jeremy ever again. Oh my gosh, I wish I did. What's weird is that we don't see Amber or Matthew later in the show, and some people think that means that they're producer plants. That logic doesn't really follow to me because I feel like it would be a lot easier to get them back on the show for more drama if they were actually plants. But as I said, I want Matthew to be a character and not real. America, they do love a good underdog, and they do love comebacks. I think I now got the entire country of America on my side. I'm gonna go get Amber. Amy and Johnny are a couple I actually completely forgot about until engagement, which is a good thing because no drama, except for the brief return of the love is blind curse. Banana. Oh God. My name is Amy. She's a, a bad mama sita. We three kings are glory inside. Fields and fountains following yonder star. But early on, forgettable to me. Jeremy, which is spelled heinously, is in a love triangle with Laura and Sarah Ann. What's up, Sarah? What? Jeremy's personality is just Hawaiian shirts. What's the Hawaiian shirts for? Uh, I just fuck with Hawaiian shirts. And deception, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Laura hates the shirts. He and Laura bond over having OCD, which they seem to think is the same as being tidy. Laura was all right until she told Jessica to go home and refused to divulge the reason why. We should go. We should leave one. Okay. Just trust me. Tell me why. He's not your man. He's not your man. Can you please tell me why? He's not your man. We know he's not your man. Why are you edging us? It comes across as wanting to look like the hero and relishing the drama versus following anyone's or the producer's rules. Enter Sarah Ann. I'm right. struggling to keep my eyes open and that like my Botox like is gonna like fuck up or something. I don't know. Like I, I It's like an edginess to it. We might have a different understanding of edgy. She also has social media followers. I have like 31,000 followers on there, but like- Just so you know. Brittany and Ken trauma dump on each other and align on how they both want her to be submissive. I'm the one that like wants to be submissive. <laughs> yep. Like that is my dream. <laughs> They're religious and want to wait till marriage. As expected, Amy and Johnny get engaged. So do Brittany and Ken. Let's go. Let's go. And Laura and Jeremy. Did I just find my baby daddy? Found your baby daddy? Oof. Clay graciously proposes to AD despite being worried that she won't be hot enough. Let's go. Let's go. Shot myself in the mouth so many times, <laughs> baby. 
I said, girl, if you don't show me what you look like, <laughs> there ain't no way I'm proposing. I'll be lying to you say that I still don't think the physical is important, but I just have a feeling that AD is definitely gonna be a good looking. I don't even wanna even start thinking about what the possibility, she doesn't look good, like, ah. Uh. Then comes the reveal. <laughs> Ooh. He does call her beautiful, but there's a lot of attention on her body, which we'll get to. Jimmy ultimately breaks up with Jessica. Understandably, she's annoyed, though I think it's interesting she says, And I'm leaving here alone. That was not supposed to happen. It's known that not everyone makes it out of the pods, but she thought she was guaranteed to be in a couple. Jessica, being in a show where she can't get ahead due to her appearance, falls back on her looks at the end, like Chelsea, just in a different manner. So Jimmy proposes to Chelsea. I've never been more sure that just that, that Chelsea is. Are you happy? I'm so happy. I don't want to let you go. He immediately tells her. That's why I'm this way. Not anything against you. I. Which is a great start. She definitely lied to me on how she looks, but I can work with that. I mean, he's trying, but that would be terrible to hear. That's our five couples. Here I want to say that a lot of Love is Blind is really boring, actually. The pod section takes up nearly half the season. It's a lot of conversations that could have been cut if they were open to a 10 episode season. I was watching on two times speed. I was jumping 15 seconds ahead. I was thinking about death. I guess what I'm trying to say is you're welcome. The White Toast hosts, Nick and Vanessa Lachey, appear for 10 seconds to say the couples are going to the Dominican Republic and say, Is love blind? The way they're paid is they win $100 every time they say the word sight unseen and experiment. Honestly, I feel like Jimmy's taquitos are a more prominent character in the show. On the couple's honeymoon, the cracks start to show except for Amy and Johnny, who live in their own untouchable world. Stop. It's like playing chin violin. <laughs> Is this my life now? Jimmy keeps complimenting various parts of Chelsea, like her teeth. Uh, you have like big square white teeth. I noticed Modern your display. eyes. Not like Thanks. big, big teeth, but like you have mm -hmm. like ideal teeth. And take this with a grain of salt because I'm obviously not him, but to me it feels like something you do when you're not into someone. Like, when I'm asked my opinion on something and I don't feel safe to give it, I tend to just say associated but not really relevant facts. So if someone showed me a painting and I hated it, but I didn't want to lie or hurt their feelings, I'd be like, wow, that is a painting. Ooh, it has a vibe. I really like that color. But when Chelsea prompts him, he can see that she needs that reassurance, so he delivers. You were absolutely gorgeous. You looked absolutely stunning tonight. Clay is letting the mask slip. Arguably, he never had it on quite right, but AD is just not letting herself see it. If we're out of shape, I will tell you. Get in that motherfucking gym. I would be determined to go if I said it that way. We're gonna have children. I would be in the gym with you every day. Love is blind to red flags. The couples meet each other for the first time all drunk, and it's as terrible as you might expect. Men and women go around sexualizing AD like crazy. Jimmy tells Chelsea that AD has a nice rack. That woman, does, woman. is absolutely stacked. Chelsea turns around and tells it to her face to make it less awkward. That girl, Whoa. She's, she's pretty stacked. Embarrassing me. It's so uncomfortable. Thank you. You're just, you're the greatest. You got style, but like, I bet you none of these dudes notice at all. Like, oh, hey, I feel good, me. look good, feel good, play good. You look good. I'm, I'm not trying to impress you, you know? Jeremy tells AD that Laura was joking about bean dipping AD, which basically means smacking her boobs. I don't know if this is the motion. I am sorry. Can you tell I've never heard of bean dipping before? Uh, it becomes this whole confrontation. She smacked the shit on my titties. Smack your titties? Yeah, like, titties. Uh, literally hit, hit. She told me to do that, and I'm like, what is she wrong with you? She told you to do that to yeah. who? You. That's and I'm so like, what crazy. Is I'm what joking, what the fuck? Yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to make something out of nothing. I mean, what the fuck? Uh, I mean, yeah, nothing to you, but something to him. Drunk Jimmy goes around being insensitive to Chelsea, joking with other women about not making it too far up their lists. To be fair, I think that Chelsea is valid in feeling insecure, but she has huge reactions again and again and again. Ken and AD have a conversation about the difficulties of a mixed race marriage, after which, I don't know if this is just because of editing, Ken becomes a lot colder to Brittany. It's a noticeable difference. 
Speaking of editing, there is this brutal edit where it's just so many seconds of awkward silence, uncut. until they notice dolphins and Ken professes his love for them. I loved it so much. So that's the origin of a meme. AD and Clay also get the awkward edit. <laughs> it also reminds me of this disrespectful edit as well. Chelsea told me she looked like Megan Fox. I'm so sweaty. The only conflict that Amy and Johnny seem to have in their relationship is over birth control. Basically, she can't be on it, and so they don't have sex. Viewers have been clowning on them for not knowing what condoms are, but I'm pretty sure they just want a second layer of protection, so more boring. Brittany is like begging Ken for physical affection at this point, and he's giving her nothing. Ken is just glued to his phone. He's a middle school principal, so at first I thought he was just busy with work, but honestly, it seems like he just has a phone addiction and is simply rude. At 1.30 a.m. in the morning. I did. With the, all the lights on. I did wake you up. When um, I had to get up at 5 a.m. in the morning. You did. Please say goodnight. He suddenly becomes so checked out of the relationship and acts inconsiderately to her. Like he was waiting for an out. He breaks up with her. Give me a hug so you know it's no beef. And it's so foul because afterward he just gets on his phone again. Laura says Jeremy's house looks staged. Which, stay tuned for the end. She and Jeremy meet the parents and even her parents are like, our daughter is a bit much. Some of the stuff that she can dish out and it can. She's very strong willed. If you make her into a princess and put her on a pedestal, she'll walk all over you and hate that she gets away with it. This is a crazy shot, by the way. I think they both really care. We see Clay dreams of being a TikTok influencer. Interesting. When AD meets his mom, his mom is the one who gives her her scarf because AD is cold. Infuriating. Jimmy has a thing for taquitos. I was trying to eat all the taquitos before anybody else saw them. I was eating them so fast and so hard, I bit the shit out of my lip. Chelsea has another insecurity flare up, triggered by thinking he might leave her for Jessica. He calls her clingy. Truthfully, you've been a little clingy. Which awakens a new boss for him to battle. Clingy. Sarah Ann from the pods messages Jeremy, which creates drama. If there's ever a chance your mind is shifting in your choice, I would love the opportunity to meet you. Laura teaches us a masterclass on how to catch a man in a lie. The bars close at two. You hung back with Sarah Ann and was talking till 5 a.m. I shared my location with you. How was that supposed to give any reassurance? Nor do I want to be engaged with someone to where I need that level of reassurance where I need to follow their location. And I was asleep. So what exactly did you want me to do? Where were you? In the parking lot. You weren't at the parking lot of Lost and Found. Don't share your fucking location if That's you don't bullshit. want me to check it at 5 a.m. That's bullshit. Then there's an alley that cuts back there. You weren't even in South End. You were north of Uptown, which is where Sarah Ann lives. We then get the treat of witnessing Jeremy lie to his mom's face. You're lucky it wasn't me. As at least he doesn't play favorites. Go kick rocks with open-toed fucking shoes. This sounds like something I would have written angrily in my notes app 24 hours after a disagreement and then six months later feel thankful that I didn't have the guts to send. AD confronts Sarah Ann for DMing an engaged man. Outlandish to tell a man who just got engaged that if the door is still open. In this scenario, no, and not to interrupt you. You can argue about whether a love is blind engagement is the same as a real life engagement, but my take on this is just why not wait till the engagement implodes and then swoop in. Sarah Ann and Jeremy go jet skiing, possibly at a different time, but implied to be while Laura is there crying. This editing, <laughs> Jessica is excited to dangle temptation in front of Jimmy's face. All of his exes look like me. Chelsea is like the end all be all, everything. But Jimmy's a man. If I were to see Jimmy again, it's gonna be like dangling temptation like right in front of his face. It's the truth and you know it is. Everybody knows it is. Don't look at me like I'm wrong. Which Laura seems okay with. Do you think that he would wanna see me? 
Yeah. The intent seems kind of like Sarah Ann's, but to be fair, she doesn't actually do anything, which is a big difference. Chelsea tells Trevor that she loves him, which you know she would not tolerate Jimmy doing to Jessica. Chelsea and Jimmy fight over him going to a bar to celebrate his friend for an hour and a half. You don't think that I care about you just because I want to go out and like uh, have one drink just to make an appearance for a friend and come right back? That's not the kind of person I want to be with. This fight lasts a good chunk of the episode, she is talking over him and it's pretty hard to watch. She reveals on camera that he slept with one of his friends, something he told her in confidence off camera. I don't have a a physical relationship with them. I want you to trust me. Y you do though. You told me you fucked her. Calling and texting and being with each other when I'm gone out of town. It's because they care it's about- It's because, it's because of what? His friends didn't sign up for that kind of scrutiny, but I guess she regards them as collateral damage. I also wouldn't be happy if I had a partner who was good friends with his ex, to each their own. But in this case, Chelsea also has an ex who's her best friend. So Jimmy forgives her. Later, he gets mad when she says they're not as strong a couple as Amy and Johnny, which is just true. He probably just wants out at this point. And then he finally breaks up with her. There's this phenomenon very evident in the love is blind diverse of the partner halo effect. I know there has to be an actual term for this, but I... I'm so tired right now. When one of the partners is really disliked, the other is perceived as an angel by default. Jimmy kind of falls into this category for me. The online sentiment started off very anti-Jimmy, and then as people zeroed in on Chelsea, he suddenly could do no wrong. We can attribute some of this switch up to his admirable patience in their numerous fights, but not all of it. They do their dress and suit fittings in bachelorettes slash bachelor parties, and... I'm so uninterested in this, so that will be all. So Clay's been doing this cute little thing where he repeatedly declares unprompted to AD that he doesn't want to cheat on her. Um, I really don't want to let you down, you know what I'm saying? Like, not that I'm going to let you down, I just don't want to, you know? Down after no, I didn't like... say I'm going to let you down, I, I don't want to let you down. Right, well. I... The concept of one girl. Yeah. I'm always having a fear of like, can I just be with one person? He seems to think that cheating is hereditary, but like his mom was faithful, so. What? Then we meet Clay's dad, upon which we immediately understand why Clay is the way he is. It's actually really sad. His dad, day of Clay's wedding, just rambles on about how good he, Clay's father, used to be at track. Track was always my thing. Yeah. yeah. You know, high school, all American, college, all American, yeah, yeah. Olympic teams, yeah. the Melrose Games, yeah, yeah. and I pulled that hamstring. Yeah, I remember it. Yeah. That was the most important to me my whole life. That's the most words he said to you? Okay, buddy. <laughs> this is when you know he's not feeling it. I was telling you, I said, I need to know what you look like before I propose. Came through, you popped out, I saw you, and I was like, I could work with that. <laughs> you know? I, I don't think it's responsible for me to say I do, but I want you to know <laughs> that I'm rocking with you. And, uh, I I'm at a loss for words. Like, he's doing AD a favor because he really isn't ready, but... The disrespect. At least AD gets a hard walkout scene though. Clay's parents have a gem of a conversation. He struggles with a marriage. With commitment? Okay. With a marriage. Okay. Is it sacred? Mm -hmm. Clay's dad literally blames his own dad and Clay's mother just stops him right there. I didn't necessarily have the best role models in my life. I know. And, and although we came from broken families, that doesn't mean that we have to pass on that brokenness to our kids. Absolutely. You know, tell him meet somebody like his mom. Yeah, but you met me, but you wasn't good to me. Should I go talk to her? Mm -hmm. um, uh, yeah, you can. You know what I mean? You, you definitely don't want to appear to be indifferent. I'm always in awe of people who can show up for a blip in time and become the series villain. Like, stat. Amy and Johnny get married. They are, as usual, sweet and normal, unbothered. A huge part of the Love is Blind viewing experience is actually outside the show itself. The episodes drop in batches, and after each release, people flock to their online communities like Twitter or Reddit to bond over real-time memes and discourse. It's fun to share the experience, and some people get really invested, making TikToks and Reels, dissecting not just the episodes, but the cast's public lives, from stalking their social media to stalking them in public. People try to figure out who's together and what's happened in the year since filming. This is how we found out that several of the cast members might have had whole ass partners right before and during filming for the show. 
Jeremy has been said to have been engaged and sold his house a week or two prior to filming. Trevor apparently had a girlfriend the whole time. Allegedly. It makes sense that the bigger the show gets, the harder it is going to be to attract people with genuine intentions. But what even are genuine intentions? I would say that everyone who applies for Love is Blind at this point wants clout. Otherwise, it doesn't seem worth it. All of them are clout chasers, just on a spectrum. I mean, I have no room to talk. I'm on YouTube. And can you really blame them? Jessica, who had a few thousand followers prior to the show, now has over 200,000 and is followed by celebrities. She wasn't even in a main couple. Although, I do think you can draw the line at a being actually a fit for the show and realistically seeking marriage. It seems like a common practice for casting to recruit through social media, i.e. Instagram, which some of the casts are claiming as though them not applying directly excuses them from knowing what the show is about. Like, even if you were approached with the pseudonym, at some point, Love is Blind would have disclosed what it was. And if not, I guess they could have left. I can't say it would have been easy to decide to leave at that point. Really, the casting people should have done a much better job with their background checks. It's like they don't even know how to lurk. Have they tried asking a woman? But Netflix might be too busy worrying about their lawsuit. In 2022, Netflix was sued over inhumane working conditions, such as having to wait for food and water and being heavily encouraged to drink. Previous contestants have stated the show ruined their lives. We were filming 18 to 20 hours a day. Free labor, essentially, or labor at $7.14 an hour. You don't have access to water unless you want to drink it out of the faucet or the shower. We're all just sitting there not being fed um, on any kind of regular cadence, uh, but definitely being fed a lot of alcohol. I'm not sure whether conditions improved this season, but I feel like I saw the cast eating. We get it, Netflix. You feed people now. Gold star. But the iconic gold goblets that they use to ensure continuity between edits and flush the cast with alcohol are there to stay. The Love is Blind season 6 reunion actually drops Wednesday night, so if you notice this video's style of editing start out okay and then abruptly just give up, it's because that's what happened. I was trying to get this out in time, and at this point, I have no idea if I make it or not. Anyway, now that it's been eight videos, I want to formally introduce my giant goose because I was advised to include him more. His name is Noho Honk, or Honk for short. He's named after Noho Hank from one of my favorite shows, Barry. The idea is every time I review a show or movie or something, he will be rating it at the end. He gives Love is Blind season six, three out of five honks. He will not be taking any questions. Thank you. All right, thanks for watching. And if you got anything out of this video, please watch another and find me in the comments. Bye.